When it comes to ancient monarchs, Hollywood has made us believe these people have perfect bodies and unwavering intelligence. Yet when you delve into the pages of history, you will discover a different truth, one that unveils the real struggles of monarchs in the past. These regal figures, depicted as flawless, were in reality beset by health challenges and often made decisions clouded by the effects of inbreeding. From the troubled reign of Christian VII of Denmark, known as the Mad King, to the rule of Queen Anne of Great Britain, whose legacy was marred by obesity, there are so many secrets about ancient monarchs that we have no idea of. Now let's embark on a historical journey. It's a journey that takes us beyond the glitz and glamour, peeling back the layers of royal tales to reveal the 10 most inbred sovereigns in history. Number 10. King Charles II of Spain, the Bewitched Monarch During the era when sisters, brothers, and cousins' marriage was the norm, the reign of King Charles II of Spain, also known as Carlos the Bewitched, stands as a stark and tragic example of the perils of inbreeding within royalty. Born on November 6, 1661, Charles II was the product of generations of intermarriage among European royal families, leading to a host of health issues and a fragile dynasty. Charles was the son of King Philip IV of Spain and his niece Mariana of Austria, making him a direct descendant of the Habsburg dynasty. What set Charles apart from his predecessors was the alarming degree of inbreeding in his lineage. His parents were closely related, and his ancestors had routinely married close relatives for political and dynastic reasons. As a result of this extensive inbreeding, Charles faced a multitude of physical and intellectual challenges from birth. He suffered from a range of health issues, including a pronounced jaw deformity, a severely curved spine, and several cognitive impairments. Historians describe Charles as short, lame, epileptic, senile, and completely bald before he clocked 35 years, his physical appearance was so strikingly unusual that he became known as El Hechizado, or the Bewitched. Charles's inbred heritage cast a shadow over his reign, which lasted from 1665 until he died in 1700. His reign was marked by a series of crises, both internal and external, which he was ill-equipped to handle due to his physical and mental limitations. One of the most significant challenges was the decline of the once mighty Spanish Empire, Spain was embroiled in numerous conflicts during Charles II's rule, including the War of Devolution and the Nine Years' War, which saw the empire losing significant territories and influence. His inability to provide strong leadership exacerbated these issues, and Spain's decline continued. Charles II's marital woes further highlighted the consequences of inbreeding. He married twice, first to Marie Louise of Orléans and later to Maria Anna of Neuburg, but both marriages were childless. Charles's severe health problems left him unable to produce an heir, sparking concerns over the future of the Spanish monarchy. The absence of a clear heir led to a succession crisis upon Charles II's death. His passing marked the end of the Spanish Habsburg dynasty and the beginning of the War of the Spanish Succession, as various European powers vied for control of the Spanish throne. The tragic tale of King Charles of Spain serves as a somber reminder of the dangers of intermarriage within royal families. His reign, characterized by physical suffering, political turmoil, and dynastic uncertainty, stands as a cautionary tale in the annals of history. It is a poignant narrative that underscores the importance of genetic diversity and the profound impact it can have on the fate of nations and rulers. Number 9. Christian VII of Denmark, The Mad King now is the time for a captivating tale about a young king named Christian VII who ruled Denmark. He was a special king, but not in a good way. You see, his family tree was like a puzzle with lots of pieces that fit together. But they were too close, like cousins who married each other. Christian was born with some problems because of this family puzzle. He had trouble with his health and thinking. His childhood was not very happy because the grown-ups around him wanted to have power, so they didn't take good care of him. When Christian VII became king, things got even more interesting. Sometimes he acted like a regular king, but other times he acted strangely. People even called him the Mad King. He got married to a lady named Caroline Matilda, but it wasn't a happy marriage. 
It was like they were both stuck in a tough situation. The most exciting part of Christian's life was his friendship with a doctor named Johann Friedrich Struense. They made some big changes in Denmark, like letting people write what they wanted in newspapers and being more accepting of different religions. But just when things seemed to be getting better, Christian's strange behavior came back. Some powerful people didn't like what he and Struense were doing, so they took control again, and the changes they made were undone. Towards the end of Christian's time as king, he didn't have much say in things. He lived away from the public eye, and his story became a sad one. Christian's life reminds us that family connections can have big effects. His story is like a puzzle, with some bright moments and some dark ones, where his family history made a big difference in how his life turned out. Number 8. King George III of England, the Erratic Monarch Between 1760 to 1820, King George III of England occupied a unique place in history, marked not only by his royal stature but also by his health issues. His story is a poignant reminder of how the complexities of genetics can influence the course of a nation's destiny. George was born on June 4, 1738 into the Hanoverian dynasty, a German noble house that had ascended to the British throne. His ancestry was steeped in royal intermarriage, with cousins marrying cousins across European courts for centuries. This intricate web of family connections would come to define his life and reign. From an early age, it was evident that George bore the genetic legacy of his royal lineage. He experienced moments of physical and mental distress and historians have since speculated that these episodes were related to a genetic disorder, possibly porphyria, which was exacerbated by the inbreeding within his family tree. As he ascended to the throne in 1760, George faced the challenges of ruling a vast and growing British empire. Yet it was his recurring bouts of mental instability that would become the hallmark of his reign. These episodes of madness, marked by confusion and erratic behavior, would periodically overshadow his rule and lead to a strained relationship with his subjects. Despite these challenges, George's reign was not devoid of significant historical events. He faced the American Revolution, which ultimately led to the loss of the Thirteen Colonies, a significant chapter in British history. His determination to regain lost territories and uphold royal authority in the face of growing unrest defined his reign. George's private life was also deeply influenced by his inbred nature. He married Charlotte of Mecklenburg-Strelitz, a union arranged for political reasons but eventually led to 15 children. His devotion to his family, despite the strains of his mental health, endeared him to his subjects and contributed to the popular image of a loving family man. The latter years of George's reign were marked by increasing mental instability and blindness. He withdrew from public life, and the Prince Regent, his son, took on the responsibilities of governance. In 1820, George passed away. Today, King George's story serves as a vivid example of the intricate web of genetics, power, and history that defined European royalty. His reign, marked by moments of brilliance and episodes of madness, is a testament to the enduring impact of inbreeding within royal families. In the grand tapestry of history, his legacy is a poignant reminder that even the mightiest monarchs are not exempt from the genetic intricacies that shape their destinies. Number 7. Queen Anne of Great Britain, the Obese Sovereign Queen Anne of Great Britain, who reigned from 1702 to 1714, is a historical figure whose story is entwined with the consequences of inbreeding, a practice common among European royalty during her time. Her life was a mix of triumphs and hardships, with the genetic legacy of her ancestry casting an unprecedented shadow over her reign. Anne was born on February 6, 1665, into the Stuart dynasty, a family with deep ties to the royal houses of Europe. These connections often led to marriages between close relatives, which played a significant role in Anne's life. Anne's parents were James II of England and Anne Hyde, and they were cousins. This family closeness is an example of the inbreeding that was common among royal families during this period. As a result of this practice, Anne carried genetic factors that would later influence her health and life. One of the most significant consequences of Anne's inbred genetic nature was her numerous health problems. She faced issues such as severe obesity, gout, and difficulties with pregnancy. 
These health challenges are believed to have been influenced by her genetic makeup, as her parents' close familial ties increased the risk of inherited health issues. Anne's life took a dramatic turn when she ascended to the throne in 1702, becoming Queen of England, Scotland, and Ireland after the death of King William III. Her reign was marked by important events, including the War of the Spanish Succession and the Acts of Union that united England and Scotland into Great Britain. Despite these achievements, Anne's personal life was filled with tragedy. She experienced numerous pregnancies, but most ended in stillbirths or infant deaths. Her only surviving son, William Duke of Gloucester, died at the age of 11, leaving Anne without a direct heir. This dynastic uncertainty would later lead to the succession crisis known as the War of the Spanish Succession. Anne's reign was also notable for her close friendship with Sarah Churchill, the Duchess of Marlborough. Their relationship was significant both politically and personally, but it eventually soured, leading to a dramatic falling out. In the latter years of her reign, Anne's health deteriorated further, and she became increasingly isolated. She passed away on August 1st, 1714, marking the end of the Stuart dynasty and the beginning of the Hanoverian era in British history. Queen Anne's life is a story of a monarch whose reign was influenced by the genetic challenges she faced due to inbreeding within European royalty. Her health struggles and the complexities of her personal and political life were deeply intertwined with the genetic legacies of her ancestry. In the tapestry of history, she is a poignant reminder of the impact of royal intermarriage on the destinies of monarchs and nations. Number 6. Tutankhamun, the Cain Pharaoh Almost everyone has heard about Tutankhamun who lived between 1342 BC to 1325 BC. He was an Egyptian pharaoh who became a world celebrity because nobody robbed his tomb. The treasures and the curse surrounding his afterlife remnants captured our imagination. But there is more to Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun, like a character in an ancient story, was not like other pharaohs. He didn't ride gallantly in chariots, for his legs were not strong and sturdy. Instead, he relied on a cane to support his fragile steps, a symbol of his hidden struggle. Why, you might ask? The answer lies in the remarkable but tragic tale of his parents. Tutankhamun's parents were not like ordinary couples. They were brother and sister, bound not just by love but by blood as close as the desert sands themselves. This practice of marrying within the family, as common as the Nile's waters, was a way for pharaohs to keep their royal lineage pure and unbroken. However, it carried with it a heavy burden, the risk of inbreeding. The intermarriage of his parents cast a long shadow over his life, a shadow that would eventually manifest in his very bones. As he grew, it became evident that Tutankhamun was not like other children. His left foot bore the mark of necrosis, a chilling word that means the death of tissue. It was as if a curse had settled upon his limb, making it difficult for him to walk. This young pharaoh who possessed all the power of ancient Egypt could barely move without help. To support his feeble steps, archaeologists discovered over a hundred walking canes within the chambers of his tomb, a testament to his struggle. But it wasn't just his legs that bore the weight of his lineage. Molecular genetics and the magic of computed tomography scanning unveiled the truth hidden within his mummy. His bones were fragile, as if the sands of time had stripped away their strength. His immune system, the guardian against sickness, was frail, leaving him vulnerable. Although Tutankhamun possessed all the riches and splendor of Egypt, he did not enjoy the power he held. He was but a young soul in an ancient world, a world where his genetic legacy, the result of a brother and sister's love, determined the course of his existence. Tragically, at the tender age of 18, Tutankhamun died of an unknown infection caused by his inbred genetics. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Among these six regal figures, one man stands out with an unusual look. Though distinctly human, the image of the man carries an enigmatic weight, a reflection of the inbred genetics within the royal family. His gaze holds a distant, haunting quality, as if it has witnessed the secrets of generations bound by shared blood. His visage, marked by lines of lineage, tells a profound story. This man is not a creature of the wild, but rather a testament to the practice of royal intermarriage. 
His striking contrast to the other royals prompts us to ponder the consequences of inbreeding in noble families, where kin married kin for power. As we look upon this image, let us not rush to judgment, but rather let us engage in a thoughtful discourse. Let us reflect on the lessons of history and the choices made by those who held power. Also, we are inviting you to join this conversation, to share your thoughts and insights on the profound implications of royal families marrying themselves. Drop your thoughts in the comments section below. Number 5. Henry VI, the Unruly King Unlike other monarchs with family intermarriage, Henry VI, the son of Henry V and Catherine of Valois, had quite a different case. While Henry V was of royal blood, Catherine of Valois was non-royal. However, Catherine's family had a long history of intermarriage among close relatives, and this maternal lineage soon found its way to Henry VI. From the outset, Henry VI faced challenges due to his inbred nature. His physical health was a source of concern, marked by fragility and vulnerability to illness. Yet it was his mental well-being that would come to define his reign. He exhibited episodes of mental instability, which many historians attribute to the genetic consequences of inbreeding. His illness, which is consistent with a diagnosis of schizophrenia, robbed Henry of his personality, his crown, his wife, his only son, and his life. Henry's health challenges further led to civil wars, historically known as the Wars of the Roses. This was a struggle for the English crown between the House of Lancaster, represented by Henry, against the House of York. The political turmoil that ensued saw England torn apart. The difficulties Henry VI faced as a monarch with inbred genetics were further compounded by his personality. He was often described as a gentle and pious soul, ill-suited for the ruthless politics of his time. At 31, Henry experienced the worst moments of his life. He suddenly became mute and unresponsive. Afterward, he was apathetic with deterioration of ability, drive, interest, and self-care, and hallucinations and religious delusions. This escalated to internal strife and external threats to the crown. One of the most significant challenges of Henry's reign was his relationship with France. His maternal connections to the Valois dynasty initially gave him a claim to the French throne, leading to the Hundred Years' War. However, his inaction and indecision in this conflict weakened England's position and sowed the seeds of discord within his realm. As Henry's reign progressed, the Wars of the Roses intensified, with rival factions vying for control. His periods of mental instability left a power vacuum, with ambitious nobles seeking to exploit it. The conflict culminated in his deposition in 1461, effectively ending his first reign. Although he briefly regained the throne in 1470, his second reign was marked by instability and his eventual capture. Henry VI died under mysterious circumstances in the Tower of London in 1471, marking the end of his tumultuous life. Number 4. Queen Maria I of Portugal, Maria the Mad Queen Maria I of Portugal, who reigned from 1777 to 1816, is a historical figure whose life and reign were profoundly impacted by her genetic inheritance. Her story is one of familial bonds and the complex consequences of royal intermarriage. Maria I was born on December 17, 1734, into the House of Braganza, was the eldest daughter of King Joseph I and Queen Mariana Victoria of Spain. From her early years, it was evident that Maria carried within her the genetic legacy of her royal lineage. She exhibited signs of mental instability, marked by episodes of confusion and distress. This fragility of her mental health would become a defining feature of her reign. In 1777, Maria ascended to the throne of Portugal, a realm that was already grappling with the challenges of colonial expansion and political reform. However, it was her struggle with mental illness that would cast a shadow over her reign. Hereditary mental health issues, exacerbated by royal intermarriage, were the invisible chains that bound Maria. Her episodes of mental instability became increasingly pronounced, leaving her unable to rule effectively. This vulnerability opened the door to political manipulation and power struggles within the Portuguese court. The consequences of Maria's genetic inheritance were felt not only in her personal life, but also in her political decisions. She faced mounting pressure to govern from her son, Prince John, who served as her regent. Under his guidance, Portugal underwent significant reforms and modernization, 
including the expansion of trade and education. Despite these advancements, Maria's genetic legacy left her unable to actively participate in the governance of her nation, while her reign saw Portugal on the cusp of transformation and progress. In 1816, Maria's reign came to an end with her death, but the impact of her genetic inheritance lingered in the annals of history. Her story serves as a reminder of the profound consequences of royal intermarriage, where the bonds of kinship, while meant to preserve dynasties, could also bring forth challenges that shaped the course of nations. Number 3. Julius Caesar Augustus Germanicus, the inbred tyrant. Caligula, whose full name was Gaius Julius Caesar Augustus Germanicus, was a Roman emperor who reigned from 37 AD to 41 AD. His rule is often remembered for its cruelty, extravagance, and bizarre behavior, making him one of the most notorious emperors in Roman history. Caligula's early life seemed unremarkable. He was born in 12 AD to Germanicus, a popular Roman general, and Agrippina the Elder, a granddaughter of Emperor Augustus. However, his childhood was marred by political turmoil, including the deaths of his father and brothers. He was raised in the military, earning the nickname Caligula, which means little boot, because he often dressed in a small soldier's uniform. When Caligula became emperor at the age of 24, there were initial hopes for a promising reign. However, his behavior quickly took a dark turn. He exhibited signs of extreme extravagance and recklessness, spending vast sums of money on lavish parties and extravagant buildings, and even declaring himself a god. One of the most infamous aspects of Caligula's rule was his cruelty. He was known for arbitrary acts of violence and brutality, which included ordering the execution of prominent citizens for little or no reason. He also had a penchant for humiliating the Senate and the Roman elite. Caligula's eccentric behavior extended to his personal life as well. He engaged in incestuous relationships, including marrying his sister, and exhibiting erratic behavior. Some accounts even suggest that he appointed his favorite horse as a consul, a high-ranking political office in Rome. His actions led to growing discontent among the Roman populace and the Senate. A conspiracy formed against him, and in 41 AD, Caligula was assassinated by a group of disgruntled senators and members of his guard. His death marked the end of his tumultuous reign. Caligula's brief but notorious rule serves as a cautionary tale of unchecked power and the dangers of absolute authority. Many people had tried to explain why Caligula acted so weird, and one document that came close was written by one of his biographers, Suetonius. He documented that Caligula suffered from mental issues that manifested throughout his life. His eccentric behavior, cruelty, and extravagance have left a lasting imprint on the annals of Roman history, making him a figure whose name is synonymous with tyranny and excess. Number 2. King Alfonso XII of Spain, the Dynamic Inbred In the pages of Spain's history, there is a king named Alfonso IX, and his reign was touched by an unusual twist, a genetic legacy hidden within his royal bloodline. It's a tale that brings us into the grandeur of Spanish royalty, where secrets lay beneath the surface. Alfonso was born in 1857, a prince destined to rule a nation with a storied past. His parents were close relatives, a common practice among royal families in those days. This family closeness, while meant to preserve the royal line, carried with it a hidden consequence, a risk of inbreeding. As a young king, Alfonso faced the weight of expectations and the shadows of his genetic inheritance. You see, his ancestors had practiced these close marriages for generations, and the impact began to reveal itself in his own life. One of the most noticeable consequences was his health. Alfonso struggled with various illnesses throughout his life, often leaving him in a weakened state. This fragility, a result of his genetic makeup, challenged his ability to govern effectively. But the tale takes a turn beyond health. Alfonso's reign was marked by the complexities of Spanish politics. He ascended to the throne at a time of political turmoil and division. His challenge was to bring stability to his nation, but his genetic legacy added to the complications. Marriage was another area where his genetic inheritance played a role. He married his cousin, Maria Cristina of Austria, continuing the tradition of royal intermarriage. This choice, though intended to strengthen alliances, raised concerns among some quarters. Despite these challenges, Alfonso XII worked diligently to unite his country. He aimed to reconcile political factions, rebuild the economy, and bring about much-needed reforms. His dedication and efforts began to earn him the respect and admiration of his people. But as history often reminds us, the story took an unexpected turn. Alfonso's life was cut short at a young age, leaving his legacy unfinished. 
He died in 1885, leaving Spain in mourning and his young son, Alfonso XIII, to inherit the throne. Number 1. King Frederick William II of Prussia In the royal courts of Prussia, there once lived a king whose life was touched by the unusual practice of intermarriage within his own family. This king was Frederick William II, and his reign was marked by a genetic legacy that had far-reaching consequences. Frederick William II was born in 1744 into the House of Hohenzollern, a noble dynasty with a long history of ruling Prussia. As a young prince, he was set to inherit the throne, but little did he know that his family's history of intermarriage would shape his life in unexpected ways. What happened was, Frederick's family tree was a web of intermarriage. His parents were first cousins, and this pattern extended to his grandparents and beyond. These familial bonds, while meant to strengthen the dynasty, sowed the seeds of genetic consequences. One of the most noticeable outcomes of this inbreeding was the genetic deformities that afflicted Frederick. He faced various health issues throughout his life, some of which were attributed to his family's genetic legacy. He had a curved spine, a condition known as scoliosis, which affected his posture and mobility. Despite these physical challenges, Frederick William II ascended to the throne in 1786. His reign was marked by a mixture of personal struggles and political ambitions. He faced the daunting task of guiding Prussia through turbulent times in European history, including the aftermath of the French Revolution. Yet amidst these challenges, Frederick made significant contributions to Prussia. He promoted religious tolerance, supported the arts, and oversaw reforms in education and agriculture. His reign also saw the construction of notable architectural landmarks, like the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin. Aside from his rare genetics, Frederick also faced criticism for his personal life, which was marked by numerous extramarital affairs and a lack of fiscal discipline. These actions led to a strained relationship with his wife, Queen Frederica, and discontent among his subjects. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.